Ah, Fisto. A robot now infamous in the Fallout New Vegas community. But how did he become so? And what is his full story? To understand Fisto the infamous robot, we need to head on over to the Atomic Wrangler Casino in Freeside. Freeside is the slums of New Vegas. Those without enough money or clout to gamble in New Vegas are forced into Freeside where there is plenty of crime and corruption. The Atomic Wrangler is the only casino in Freeside, so it's a quite popular destination. Like the Silver Rush and Mick and Ralph's, the Atomic Wrangler employs its own crier. Wanna get lucky? Head on down to the Atomic Wrangler. The exterior facade of the Atomic Wrangler has a big neon sign with an image of a cowboy straddling an atom. But the door is less than impressive. To enter the casino, we open one cracked glass door. But inside, the casino is bustling. There are people using the slot machines, the tables are all full, and there are guards around every corner. Standing against the eastern wall is a man who seems oddly out of place, named Caleb McCaffrey. Something you need, kid? I'm not a kid, old man. You've got a mouth on you, kid. If I weren't busy working for the Garretts, I might give you a few lessons in common courtesy. Get lost. What do you do around here? Hunting and killing, plain and simple. So you're a bounty hunter? Bingo. Now, if you're done asking stupid questions, I have more important things to do. Any bounty hunting tips for me? Be quick and quiet, and don't get dead. Don't get dead. Right. Because saying don't get killed must have been too difficult. Well, enough of that charming personality. Instead, we can head on over to the counter to talk with one of the proprietors of this establishment, Francine Garrett. I hear you've been making a name for yourself on the Strip. Don't forget about the Wrangler if you make it big. Do you have any work you need done around here? I have some work I need handled. Back before we instituted the caps up front rule, we used to allow customers tabs. Well, needless to say, a few customers snuck out without paying their bills. We need someone to collect. The job would pay a percentage. What kind of caps are we talking about here? If you bring all their debts back, we'll give you a cut of each. 25% is more than fair. It would add up to 150 caps if you bring them all in. We can pass either a speech or barter check to get a bigger slice of the pie. We can say, this kind of work costs time and money. A 50-50 split would cover my expenses. Or we can say, hey, I'm doing all the work over here. 50-50 and I'm game. All right, 50-50 it is. But you better bring back all of the caps. If we hear you crossed us, the next bounty hunter will be coming for you. Will I have to shoot anyone? Cause I really wanna shoot someone. I'd prefer you not kill anyone with a debt. It's a bit difficult to collect on a corpse. Just get the caps from them. After that, I couldn't care less what happens to those dead beats. All right, I'm ready to help. Great. There are three people who need to be tracked down. A real mixed basket of fruits. Their names are Grex, Santiago, and Lady Jane. Who's Grex? Grex is a bit cracked, but mostly harmless. Just don't mention anything about his lazy eye. He owes 138 caps and should still be around Freeside. And Lady Jane? Lady Jane fancies herself a high roller, but she's just another dirtbag NCR prospector. I'm not sure where to find her. I hear she's run goods for the followers of the Apocalypse in the past, but other locals might know more. She owes us 250 caps. What about Santiago? Santiago is a suave son of a bitch, but a total pansy when it comes to fisticuffs. He owes 212 caps and should be around Freeside as well. All right, sounds good. I'll get right on that. But what about your casino? What kind of goods and services does the Atomic Wrangler offer? We've got liquor, chems, and whores aplenty. Pick your fix and we'll oblige. Our only rule is no sampling the merchandise. Caps paid in advance. If you'd like to do a bit of gambling, we have an exchange at the back of the casino on the left. Since you're new, I'll lay out the rules for you. The prostitutes here aren't slaves. They decide who they service. You best make a good first impression if you want what they have to offer. Rooms are just a few caps a night. Your choice of company is extra, assuming anyone's taken a liking to you. 
Now, despite what she says here, prostitution doesn't appear at this casino until we complete a few more quests for the Atomic Wrangler. The developers originally intended to have a bunch of prostitutes here. Even the Atomic Crier refers to them being cheap, like the booze prices. But instead, they cut the prostitutes from this casino in favor of having you find them for a quest, which we will get into in a moment. But first, let's take a brief tour of the Atomic Wrangler. We've already seen the stage, the bar, and the slots. Heading through a big door to the east, we find the primary gambling floor. There's a cashier to the west, where we can exchange our currency for chips. And then the gambling tables, where we can play blackjack, roulette, or use the slots. In this room are the men and women's bathrooms, but nothing interesting is in here. And then heading out of the bathrooms and down the hallway, we find a doorway leading to the employee area and kitchen of the casino. This door is normally locked, but since Francine and her twin brother constantly open and close the door, we'll likely find this open. There's nothing terribly exciting here in the kitchen except for a whole lot of food. If you're a thief, you can walk away with quite a lot of common food and drink. From here, we can head up the stairs to the second floor. The second floor has some doors that lead out to a balcony. From the balcony, we can access a hotel room that we have access to if we rent a room, and then a few other hotel rooms. But heading back to the stairwell, we can go up to the third floor, which ends at a locked door. This leads to the private quarters of the Garrett twins. We have to unlock this door at a loss of karma to enter this section, and as soon as we enter, we're followed by guards. The guards will follow us as we explore this private area for 30 seconds or so. And if we don't leave, despite their constant warnings, they attack. Over here! Watch out! Over here! Yes. All we find up here is the bedroom for the Garrett twins, a couple of bathrooms and a barracks for all of the Wrangler guards. We'll find a couple of gun cabinets filled with pretty decent loot, but nothing special. Back down on the main floor, there is one room left to explore. We find a locked door right next to the big open door that leads to the gambling floor. This is locked with a very hard lock and it leads behind the counter to the cashier. Back here we find safes, money bags, briefcases. We can walk away with a whole lot of pre-war money. But we have a quest to do for these guys. We need to track down some scrubs that split without paying their bill. The first person we're going to track down is Lady Jane. We find her close to the main gate to the New Vegas Strip, huddling around a barrel of fire for warmth. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Who are you? I haven't the time to speak to commoners such as yourself. I was hired by the Garretts to track you down. In that case, I suppose you're here to collect. I apologize, but I simply do not have enough caps on me to cover the debt. If someone were to recover my caravan from that cave, I could easily pay in full. But who would bother with such a mess? Now we can pass either a barter or a speech check to convince her to give over every dime she has. We could say, I find it hard to believe you ran from the caravan without taking something. Or perhaps there is something else of value you could put towards the debt. I'm short 90 caps or so, but I have a few cartons of cigarettes and some sensor modules I could put toward my debt. At this point, I'll have to return to California to start anew. I haven't got a cap to my name. In which case, she gives us everything she has, and she runs off to poverty. Alternatively, we can try and help her out with her wrecked caravan issue, and say, Hey, I could retrieve the caps from your caravan. But what about the ROUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't believe they exist. Oh, I assure you, sir, they are very real and very large. Please do be careful. I will be returning to California to start anew. If anything is left of the caravan, please keep it as a show of thanks for your kindness. It is so rare to meet good, friendly people in the wastes. Here is the last location of the caravan. Good luck. This, of course, is a reference to the Princess Bride. We only get this option if we have the Wild Wasteland trait. Otherwise, she just talks cryptically about critters in the cave. But we need to go find her caravan at the Brock Flower Cave. To find the Brock Flower Cave, we can head to the nearby Legion Raid Camp. If we're enemies with the Legion, we're likely going to have a tough fight. But once the Legionaries are dead, we can walk towards a big rocky mound where we find a trail that goes up the hillside. 
In fitting with the name of the cave, we find lots of Brock flower growing outside. Then we find a big wooden door leading to the cave. As soon as we enter, we see a person run from the cave entrance deeper into the cave. But then she disappears. What is this? Was that a glitch? I did this a couple of times, and the person who appears is different each time. It looks like he or she is randomly generated. But this is intentional, and the person's name is always Prospector. As he or she gets close to rounding a corner in the cave, the Prospector will disappear. Now, when we enter the cave, we do hear the wild wasteland sound effect, but this person appears whether we have the trait or not. I think we may be led to believe that this Prospector is the ghost of either a Prospector who died in these caves sometime in the past, or perhaps the ghost of a Prospector whom Lady Jane hired to escort the caravan. If that were the case, however, he or she should have been named Caravaner, so I don't really have an answer. At any rate, we have two paths before us. We can go left or right. Turning right, we pass by a couple of mining cars filled with nuclear barrels until we reach a room. Here we find the dead Pack Brahmin. How Jane's Caravan Brahmin found its way deep into this cave remains a mystery. Typically, when caravans are sacked by raiders, we'll find the remains of those caravans out on the road. Who dragged this Brahmin deep into this cave? What's even more perplexing is what's on the Brahmin. Taking a look at the pack, we find the head of Abraham Lincoln. What? Fallout 3 players will recognize this head as an important quest piece in the quest Head of State, where we fully repair the Lincoln Memorial. The timeline of Fallout New Vegas happens many years after the events of Fallout 3, so we can only conclude from this that somehow, after we completed that quest in Fallout 3, the head got removed from the statue, placed on a pack Brahmin, and moved all the way to the West Coast. <laughs> Of all of the strange doodads to add to a pack Brahmin, why did Obsidian choose the head of Abraham Lincoln? Seems like a strange choice. Anyway, after looting the bag of coins from on the corpse of the Brahmin, we could head out or we could finish exploring this cave. It's important to finish exploring because we find some great loot here. There are two paths that exit this room the way we came, or another path that leads north to a ledge overlooking a cavern. And it's here where we find rodents of unusual size. Oh, Lady Jane was right. The R-O-U-S's do exist. Now, if we don't have the Wild Wasteland perk, these rats are still here, but they're not called R-O-U-S's. They're just called giant rats. After clearing the rats and continuing along the edge, we find a gap to the southeast leading through a broken fence. After clearing some rats in here, we find an abandoned campsite. On a table in the middle, we find some chems. Underneath, we find some ammunition, a doctor's bag, and even more chems. We can get a radiation suit sitting on a Sunset Sarsaparilla crate. But the best item is the unique varmint rifle called Rat Slayer sitting on the desk. The Rat Slayer is a great little weapon. Yes, it is a unique variant of a varmint rifle, which is not very impressive. But it comes with a high critical multiplier of times five, which is the third highest multiplier any gun has in the game. The only two guns that have higher multipliers are the Alien Blaster and the Euclid Sea Finder. This makes the Rat Slayer an exceptionally powerful gun. A character with a high critical chance of 20 or greater will get a critical strike with this gun every single time they pull the trigger. You can do this pretty easy by getting the finesse perk, having 10 luck, and wearing Boone's first recon beret. It also has an incredibly tiny spread, the smallest spread of any 5.56 chambered rifle. This means we get exceptional precision when sniping from a distance. In addition to the critical multiplier, the weapon comes with every single varmint rifle modification already installed, and it has a unique look. Instead of having a wooden stock, the entire weapon is black and it has a synthetic stock. It also has some unique markings on the stock. In the vanilla game, we find a rat skull with a whole bunch of tick marks. I have a mod installed that retextures all of the guns in the game, and for some reason the mod author decided that with this gun in particular, they wanted to remove the rat skull and replace it with a human skull. That's why we find a human skull in this example. But in the vanilla game, it is a rat skull. There's a lot more loot in here. We can get a copy of today's physician and a programmer's digest. And when done looting, we can head on out the cave. Now that we have Lady Jane's caps, we need to go track down Santiago. We find Santiago pretty close to Mick and Ralph's. 
From Mick and Ralph's, we head west through a big ruined building until we reach the other side. There we find Santiago warming his hands by a barrel fire. How are you today? Santiago is fabulous. You owe the Garrets a bunch of caps. Santiago does not owe anyone. Santiago is a freeside VIP. VIP? The Garrett said nothing about VIP status. Yes, indeed. Santiago is very important. I even have a discount in Mick and Ralph's. Perhaps you could use Santiago's discount. For 50 caps, Santiago will tell you the super secret code word to get a discount with Mick. We can either pay the 50 caps, or we can barter him down by saying, I don't even know this discount is worth 50. How about 25 caps? 25 caps will do. Tell Mick Santiago sent you, and the code word is extravaganza. He will set you up. Thanks, Santiago, but now you need to settle that debt with the Garrets. Sir, Santiago told you. Santiago has no debts. Francine warned me that you're a smooth talker. Indeed, Santiago is a poet among pretenders. If you're here to collect for the Garrets, Santiago is debt free. We can resolve this a number of ways. We can pass a speech check to say, I'd rather not kill you, but Francine put a bounty on your head. I didn't think she was upset enough to have me killed. Here are the capsule. I do the Santiago act to get out of paying for services every once in a while. I didn't think it could possibly get me killed. Or we can threaten violence, but this is going to require a lot more talking. We can say, Santiago is dead if he doesn't cough up what he owes the Garrets. Sir, Santiago does not know what he has done to offend, but he can explain everything. Liar. Pay up. Santiago is offended that you would opine such slander. I can collect from your corpse if you prefer. Here are the caps, I owe. No need for violence. Or we can start with violence by punching him in the face. Santiago, I won't ask again. Ow! Okay, here. Take the caps. Just don't hurt Santiago again. However we resolve it, once we have the caps, we have one final person to confront. Heading towards the Old Mormon Fort, we find a picnic area on the eastern side with another one of those big burning barrels. We find Grex sitting on a picnic bench. Hey man, can you spare a few caps? Ah! Francine told me you had a lazy eye, but man, looks like this guy's got a lazy face. Sheesh, you are one ugly ghoul. What? Thank you, Mrs. Obvious. Haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, and your eye! That thing is hilarious! Huh, huh, my eye? A scum-humping water baron did this to me. No one talks trash about my eye. Seriously, zombie, are you looking at me or someone off in that direction? That's it. No one insults the eye. And as Francine warned, if we continue to insult his eye, Grex attacks. We gain infamy with Freeside, but on his corpse we do find his bag of bottle caps. But let's assume that we don't want to enrage this poor ghoul. Instead of taunting him, we can say, Why are you begging? Collecting money to pay back the Garrets? Oh, yeah. I guess the Garrets sent you after me. Look, I've got the caps right here. Just don't hurt me. Great, that was easy enough. But we can push this poor ghoul further. We can coerce more money out of him by passing a speech check and say, You don't cheat the Garrets and walk away. Cough up the rest or your rat bait. Okay, here. That's everything I've got except the clothes on my back. I'm sorry about this. We can take even more from this guy by passing another speech check and saying, I think I'll make an example of you. Give me your clothes or you're dead. Anything. Take it. Just don't kill me, man. And with that, he strips off his clothes and gives them to us. Mess with the Garrets again, Grex, and you're a dead man. I won't. Thanks for not killing me. Or we can skip all this banter and start with violence. When he begs us for money, we can say, sure man, here you go, and then punch him in the face. Ah, oh, what the hell was that for? You owe the Garrets a good lump of caps. I'm here to collect. Interest? The Garrets said nothing about interest on their tabs. Look man, I've got the caps right here. Just don't hurt me. It seems like a strange response. Our dialogue option didn't include the word interest. But at any rate, with that, we've finally collected from everyone who owes the Atomic Wrangler. Heading back inside the casino, we can deliver the money to Francine. I don't care how you handled those lumps of human refuse, but you got the job done. We need you to hunt down another person. 
That son of a bitch McCaffrey stole a ton of caps and ran off to Vegas. I guess the fact that we farmed out his usual work to you pissed him off. No one steals from the Garrett twins. If you can kill that bastard and bring back as much as you can, you'll be paid very well. How am I supposed to get to the Strip? See the King. I'm sure he could work something out to get you in. You'll need to prove you're worth his time, but it'll be well worth it. If I see McCaffrey on the Strip, I'll be sure to take care of him. Good. Just stop on back when he's dead and you'll be rewarded handsomely. Bring his hat as proof of the kill. So it looks like that jerk McCaffrey, the first guy we met when we entered the casino, got upset that the Garrett twins were giving us his typical work. They stole a bunch of money from the Garrett twins, and now we gotta go track them down. If we don't have a passport to the Strip yet, we can go through a series of quests with the Kings, or we can buy a forgery from Mick and Ralph's. Either way, once we get to the Strip, we find McCaffrey standing right outside Gamora. Huh. So the Garrett sent you to track me down. What a joke. Nah, I just thought I'd say hi. Piss off. Actually, I'm here to collect McCaffrey. No one crosses the Garrett twins. I'd rather not waste the ammo, kid. But if you insist, draw. And he goes down like a sack of bricks. We don't anger anyone, presumably because he drew on us first. On his body, we find a bounty hunter duster, which I have found to be fairly rare in the game, so I was pretty excited about that, and Caleb McCafferty's hat. Strangely enough, even if we loot the hat, his corpse still wears one. But there is a way to resolve this without killing him. Instead, we can say, give me a share of the caps and your hat, and you can go free. Now why the hell should I do that? You're below me, kid. I've been killing scum twice your size since before your mother squeezed you out. We then have to pass a speech check to say, All right, well, all I need is your hat, and you're a free man. I'll tell Francine that you're dead. Well, that sounds like a bit of a bargain. I get to walk free with the Garrets thinking I'm dead. Sure, you can have my hat. I can always buy another with the caps I've got left. It would have been more fun fighting it out, though. See you later, kid. We get 57 bottle caps and his hat, but man, this guy makes me angry. <laughs> I think killing him is a much better way to resolve this. Hey! Whoa! Uh. And on his body, we still find a hefty stash of caps. Back at the Atomic Wrangler, we can tell Francine that we took care of McCaffrey. Yes! Where's his hat? Right here. This is great news. No one screws with the Garrett twins and gets away with it. I need to find a place on the wall for this. And for your reward... Here's 150 caps. I trust there were also some valuables on McCaffrey. Also, we would like to set you up with a room. You can have the corner room, rent free. It was McCaffrey's. Now that he's dead, we're happy to let you use it. Thanks for helping us. She gives us a key to one of the hotel rooms. This is our permanent room. We can use this room as a player home if we want to. It's a great alternative to the Dino Light Motel if we haven't found the Lucky 38 yet, or if we don't want to be constantly spied on by Robert House. We can sleep in the bed, but there are only two containers in here, two tiny desks by the bookshelves. Now to continue working for the Atomic Wrangler, we have to wait until night. Francine and her twin brother James run the casino, Francine during the day and James at night. In addition to being a vendor and offering us some quests, he has a unique role of being able to repair our reputation in Freeside. We can say, hey James, I could use some help with my reputation. We have two options, to pay money to gain fame and to pay money to remove infamy. One is going to cause the neighborhood to like us better. The other is going to cause the neighborhood to forgive us of our crimes. Like if we've murdered a town crier, for example. For the right caps, I might be able to put in a good word. Or let people know you're not such a bad guy. What do you have in mind? We can say, I want people to like me. Alright, I can chat you up. But it's going to cost you. I'm not risking my reputation around here for nothing. We have three options. If we choose the 250 option... Great. I'll let the townsfolk know you help old ladies across the street. And do your best to keep the town clean if you notice litter. If we choose the 500 option... That'll do nicely. I'll spin some stories about how you stopped a mugging or two and saved a kid's pet rat from certain doom. And if we choose the 1000 option... Great. This is gonna require an epic tale of heroism. I've got it. I'll say you slew a nest of Deathclaws living in the sewers. It was bloody work, 
but you waded through the pack like a man possessed. Just to make this clear, I can only spin a whopper this big once. There's only so much people will believe before they see through the bullshit. Once our fame is too high, we can't purchase any more fame from James. Sorry, chum, but I've done all I can to chat you up to the locals. Now if we want to get rid of infamy, we can say I need people to forget about some of the things I've done. Alright, you let your caps do the talking. How much exactly are you looking for the locals to forget? And again, we have three options. The 250 option... Very well. I'll let the townsfolk know you had your reasons, and convince them they were of the most benevolent means. The 500 option? You've got yourself a deal. I'll let the townsfolk know some ill-tempered goon has been spreading nasty rumors about you. And the 1,000 option. This'll take some work. But I'm sure I can convince them you were off your rocker in the past, and you've changed your ways. However, this is a once-only affair. Screw me once, shame on you, and all that jazz. People aren't gonna believe me if you go on another spree and claim the devil made you do it. If he's removed all of our infamy, or if we never had any to begin with, then he says... Sorry, bub, but I'm fresh out of ideas. I've done all I can to scrub up your rep around here. What's done is done. We can then ask him if he has any work that he needs done. We've got the basics covered, but... Now you mention it, we have had unusual requests from some of our wealthier customers. If you can recruit escorts to match these customers' proclivities, I'd be willing to pay you finder's fees. What sort of proclivities are we talking about? Our wealthiest client has a thing for ghouls and a thing for cowboys. He wants an escort who can satisfy both fetishes. Plenty of customers have said they'd be willing to pay extra for a suave talker, someone who can fake the boyfriend experience real good. And then there's these disgusting robot fetishists you may have heard about. Well, those creeps want a sex bot. If you ever run across a sex bot, not that I'd ever want one within a hundred feet of me, but I gotta be a businessman about it. I see. Those kind of proclivities. Look, I'm not gonna be your pimp. Oh, I'd still be the pimp. You just be my pissant recruiter is all. Let me know if you change your mind. All right, well, I'll expect a hundred caps minimum for each candidate I bring in. Just don't rough up the merchandise before delivery. You break it, you bought it. We can then pass either a speech or barter check to get more money out of this deal. We can say, surely these escorts are critical to your business. How about double? Or I'll need more than that to recoup my travel expenses. Okay, you got yourself a deal. Find escorts to fill the positions, and I'll pay double. All right, James. I'll let you know if I run across any suitable candidates. Just direct them to the Wrangler. I'll pay you when they show up. Hey, the sex robot may be hard to do. Do you have any ideas where I should look? The best place to start would be with Ralph, at Mick and Ralph's over on the east end of Freeside. Other than that, your guess is as good as mine. All right. We have a rather distasteful quest to complete here. We gotta find a smooth talker, a ghoul cowboy, and a sex bot, huh? Well, let's start with the smooth talker. And we actually have two options. We can't hire both of them, we can only hire one. But I'll show you how to get both so that we can make a choice later. The first candidate for the smooth talker is Old Ben. We find him in the same spot where we found Lady Jane earlier. Heading to the gate of the Strip, we see him sitting on a park bench. Hello again. Hey, old Ben, what's your story? I've done a bit of everything around here. Courier, butcher, crier, escort, gun for hire. Some of which I'm not proud of, but I do my best to help around town when needed. You were a courier? Hey, I used to be a courier before I got shot in the head. Exactly one of the reasons I got out of that job. Too many shifty characters looking to have someone else move their hot items. You were a butcher? How did you get into that? My father ran a butcher shop here in town, but business went downhill when another vendor started selling this strange meat at half our prices. Not long after my father's shop went under and he passed away from the loss, people around town started experiencing shakes. No one gets shakes like that unless they're eating human flesh, but no one would believe me. The sick bastard gradually went insane and passed away. Wasn't long before someone moved into the guy's place and found half-buried human remains in the crawl space. I didn't bother saying told you so. You were a crier? What was the job? 
After a while, I made enough money to get a passport into Vegas. Back then, you could get approved for entry for a fraction of what it costs now. Well, I got a job working as a crier outside of the tops, advertising for the local talent performing at the casino. That didn't last long. What happened? Well, being a suave young guy, I chatted up the ladies from time to time, and one of the manager's girls started to take a liking to me. I never touched the woman, but the jealous prick decided it was my time to go. He framed me by saying I'd stolen from the casino. Sure enough, a few grand was missing from the casino vault. I have to assume the bastard stole the funds and figured I was a convenient fall guy. Ah, oh, that's horrible. Wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, shit indeed happens. I was stripped of my casino apartment and all of my belongings and booted back into Freeside. From there, I didn't have a lot of career options, as my rep was destroyed. So the escort job sort of fell into my lap. No pun intended. So you were a gun for hire? When I quit the escort job, I had enough money to buy a pistol belt and some other gear. Bodyguards make a good, honest living, and I had the wits and physical build to handle most thugs. After saving a few tourists from trouble, I got a reputation for being a stand-up guy again, and after a decade, managed to save up enough to retire. Wait, escort job? Like an armed guard? Well, I suppose you could look at it that way, but I was packing a whole different kind of heat. No. Escort just sounds better than man whore. Ah, so you got paid for sex. Yep. I was damn good at my job, too. But after a while, I just felt like a piece of meat and had to quit. I could never do that. Well, I didn't have any other career opportunities open to me at the time and had to make ends meet. Well, since you have experience, how'd you like to work for the Garretts? I'm retired, but life has been a bit dull without some kind of action. What's the job? James Garrett needs a real boyfriend experience for more discerning patrons. Ah, I get you. So you think because of my past escort work, I'd be interested in that kind of thing. I got out of that work because it just made me feel empty inside. What makes you think I would ever go back to that degradation? The pay is good, and you can make your own hours. Sorry, friend, but I just can't do it. So we have to convince him we can do so one of two ways. If we have the Black Widow perk, we can say, Ben, you give your clients a precious respite from the ills of the world. Or we can pass a speech check to say you're a beacon of light in some people's depressing existence. Your work is art. I never put much thought into the well-being my clients got out of my services. I suppose they only get as much as I put into it. You know what? You're right. I looked at the whole thing from the wrong angle. I suppose I could be a loving muse to some, while simply relieve stress and tension in others. Thanks for that insight. Tell Garrett I'd be happy to start at the Wrangler immediately. This should be a nice change of pace from retirement. In which case he runs off to the Wrangler, but I feel really bad about having to convince him. The other smooth talker we can convince to take this role is none other than good old Santiago. We find him in exactly the same spot where we left him. Ah, I wasn't expecting you to return. James Garrett is looking for a suave escort. Interested in some work? I am honored they would consider me. I'll start immediately. And he leaps up and runs towards the casino. Well, that was easy. Now, we gotta find ourselves a ghoul cowboy. Where on earth are we gonna find a ghoul cowboy? I mean, yeah, we have Raul, but... After hearing his personal story, I don't think it's something he'd be interested in. Well, when we head on over to the old Mormon fort in Freeside, we happen to find an old ghoul in a cowboy hat walking around outside. Her name is Beatrix Russell. Howdy. Hey, Beatrix, who exactly are you? I've been around a while, currently working for the followers as a gun for hire, but it's getting rather dull. Aside from protecting them from the occasional thug looking to intercept supply shipments, there isn't much to do around here. The one researcher I liked who I could chat up about liquor got transferred. And the rest of the docs are pretty uptight about my kind of fun. What are you doing with the followers? I joined up looking for a decent paying job. Granted, the pay's all right, but they won't let me kick back and slog a brew at the end of the day. They're worried the filthy drunkies in detox seeing me drink will cause an immediate relapse. I say their rehab effort here is just a revolving door. Well, I bet you've seen a lot over the years. I've been around long enough to observe the patterns of human behavior. 
physical and mental anguish are especially exciting to explore. Uh, that sounds a bit cryptic, Beatrix. Sounds like you may be a bit of a dom. Hey, who doesn't enjoy a little pinch and squeal every once in a while? Well, this old ghoul has been around for a while. We can use the opportunity to tap her for some wisdom. Hey, Beatrix, tell me about Freeside. What starts in misery tends to stay there. Freeside wasn't Freeside until six or seven years ago. That's when Mr. House's robots rolled out of the Lucky 38 and started pushing everyone who wouldn't join him off the strip. Lots of folks died. Some scattered to the winds. The rest wound up in Freeside and seemed never to lose the habit of living like refugees. What are your thoughts on the Kings? What about them? Pretty much the sort of gang you'd find anywhere else. Just with better clothes. The King himself, though? He's got that something special you can't put a finger on. Too bad he likes girls with skin. What do you think of the NCR? I reckon they care about getting water and electricity from the dam. And that's where it ends. The locals here are just an inconvenience to them. Something to step over or stomp down. They're here for the resources, plain and simple. I bet you have an opinion about Mr. House. Before or after the human race shot itself in the foot. I've been around long enough to have both opinions, see. Before the war, Mr. House was a famous captain of industry. Robotics, to be specific, seemed charming in interviews. Until he became a recluse. Since the war, though? <laughs> Didn't make a peep for near 200 years. But when he came back, he came back strong and killed a lot of people. You've been working with the followers for quite some time. What are your thoughts on them? I don't know how they do it. They're like saints, those followers. If they didn't charge for their services, I'd think they was crazy. But nah, they're just naive. Warms their heart. Hey, do you know anything about the Van Graffs? Couple of rad scorpions, those two. Gloria is the stable one. But she'd slit your throat if there's a prophet in it. Or rather, she'd tell her brother to do it for her. John Baptiste is one of the sicker humans I've had the displeasure of observing. She also has a stock supply of maxims. We can ask her if she has any general advice she'd like to share. Longing makes the heart grow fonder. But I've always been a fan of hogtying my lovers to make sure they can't escape. The only thing I know for certain is that I don't know nothing. Good, bad. The guy with the gun makes the rules. Time you enjoy wasting isn't wasted time. Feed a man for free, and he'll be back asking for more. Feed a man a bullet, you won't hear from him again. Well, I can't help but like this wise old ghoul, but she revealed that she has some interesting tastes. Tastes that may align with exactly what the Atomic Wrangler needs. We can say, Hey Beatrix, are you interested in working for the Garretts? They already have that pig McCaffrey working for them. Do they need another guard? No, no, no. This would be as an escort. Ugh. I've escorted my share of idiot tourists around Freeside. Too much trouble for what it pays. Right. When I say escort, I mean prostitute. I'm all boot, knives, and leather, friend. And a ghoul besides. What kind of weirdo wants what I've got? <laughs> Turns out there are some customers looking for someone just like you. Weirdos into bullwhips and necrosis, huh? <sighs> Doesn't sound half bad. What am I thinking? I'm no whore. And I ain't about to hand my ass over to some penny ante hustler like he owns me. Now, we can immediately secure her services by passing either a speech or barter check, but all of this dialogue comes out in a further conversation. So instead, we're going to say, you could be the next big thing at the Wrangler. I've never been much of a showboat, or cared about being a public figure. I'm plenty content with caps for an honest hard day's work. It's not like you'd be a slave. You'd get to choose your clients. <laughs> What's the difference? Once you start working for the man... You gotta buy nice things to wear. Then you gotta make more money to afford nice things. Seems like a right vicious cycle to get into. You'll be paid well, and room and board is on the house. Not saying there wouldn't be advantages, especially if it let me start saving up my caps. One of the employee perks is a discount. Now you're talking. 
I suppose I could sleaze it up a bit for their customers if it means I have a non-stop supply of drink. Mmm. They do have a damn good selection of hooch over at the Wrangler. If I get to choose my customers, if I get to be a little rough with them, if my cut is fair, and if I get that discount, that just might work. Tell the Garrets I'll stop by to work out terms. And with that, the ghoul cowboy Beatrix Russell <sighs> heads on over to the Atomic Wrangler. Now, we need to find a sex bot. James said we may want to head on over to Mick and Ralph's to start our search. And this is great because we also have that discount that Santiago told us about, right? So let's go kill two birds with one stone. As we enter Mick and Ralph's, we can talk to Ralph. Hello. Playing debt collector for the Garrets, huh? I guess someone has to do their dirty work. You wouldn't happen to know where I could find a sex bot, would you? <laughs> Are you some kind of machine fetishist or something? No, no, it's not for me. Now the Garrets are looking to satisfy certain customers. <laughs> well, the only place I know of locally would be Cerulean Robotics. But that place has been overrun by vermin for years. If you want to check the place out, you can find it on the west side of Freeside. The entrance is on the back side of the building. Just watch out for thugs. The rats aren't the only vermin you need to worry about. So how are we going to program this robot to, uh, perform? Are we going to need a holotape or something? I don't know of any, but if you give me a few days and some caps, I think I could probably make one on my terminal. Now we don't have to choose this option. We can program the robot ourselves using our science skill once we find it. Otherwise, we can pass a barter or two different speech checks to have Ralph come up with a holotape for us. We can get it for free by saying, Ralph, I've been directing a lot of business your way. How about you call this a favor? All right, come back in a couple days and I should have it ready for you. We find Mick standing by some appliances. We can say, hey, Mick, Santiago says that the password is extravaganza for a discount. You aren't the first poor sucker who's come in here saying that. We don't do discounts here. Sounds like you were ripped off. I go get your money back from Santiago. Oh man, Santiago lied. He and I are gonna have to have words. After all, I know where he works. But Cerulean Robotics, that's where Ralph told us to go to find the sex bot. And it can be pretty tricky to find the place. The ruins of Freeside are a labyrinth, especially since it's spread out over a couple of different zones. Here's the fastest way I've found to get there. Immediately after leaving the Atomic Wrangler, we can turn right. After passing a liquor store, we can go through a ruined building to the right where we find a door in the back that leads to Freeside. Heading through that door, we turn left to walk through some ruins, and now we have a bit of a walk ahead of us. We can get really confused if we follow the marker on the compass because it points us towards a door. But this is the wrong door. It says door to ruin store, and this is for a different quest. Instead, we need to turn back around and go around a huge rubble pile, even further into the ruins of Freeside. We pass an Acme Realty sign, and then we find two big buildings with a small little alley separating them. This is the door to Cerulean Robotics. Upon entry, we find ourselves in a lobby. Sadly, none of the terminals in the reception area work. There are three doors in this room, many ways to go forward. Let's start by turning right. Heading through this door, we find even more rats. This is the employee break room. We find an inaccessible door to the right, and then a corpse lying on the floor next to a TV. He's supposed to have a key in his hand, but for some reason in my game, I couldn't find it. We can loot food and kitchen utensils here. Turning left, we can go through a door. This leads to the primary production floor of this robotic facility. This floor is also infested with rats. We found lots of scrap metal, fission batteries, fuses, all sorts of junk and scrap. This room leads to the lobby through two doors against the western wall. To find the sex bot, we need to go to the northern corner next to a big malfunctioning fluorescent light. There we find an average locked tool cabinet. We can use our lock picking skill to unlock this, or we can use a key that I missed earlier that we found in the hand of one of the skeletons in the break room. Inside this tool cabinet is the terminal access card. Turning left, 
we can kill another rat, where we find a bunch of Protectron charging docks, a workbench, a reloading bench, and one Protectron still in his dock, connected to a Protectron programming terminal. Before the war, this Protectron was designated Fully Integrated Security Technology Officer. To get this guy up and running, we can run a diagnostic routine, and it comes back all systems nominal. Then we can upload a programming routine. From here, we could insert the holotape that Ralph made for us, or pass a science check to program the robot ourselves with a sexbot routine. Once the routine is accepted, we can exit the terminal, and the robot emerges. Fully integrated security technotronic officer active and reporting for duty. Boy, that's a mouthful. I'm just gonna call you Fisto. Yes, ma'am. Fisto reporting for duty. Please assume the position. What? No! I am programmed for your pleasure. Please assume the position. Well, I suppose I should test you out before I hand you over to the Garrets. Servos active. Operation complete. Thank you for your business. Well, that was... different. Are you uncomfortable? My servos may require adjustment. I can't feel my legs. Numbness will subside in several minutes, awaiting further orders. Hey, is that all you got, robot? I will require a hardware and software upgrade to offer enhanced services. Good enough for me. Report to the Atomic Wrangler. James Garrett is your new owner. Yes, ma'am. Lucky what we have here, ladies. Another unsuspecting ponce. Malefic Maud, Irate Ida, and Rancorous Ruth. They attack us with their rolling pins and switchblades, wearing nothing but pre-war spring outfits. This is another event that only happens if we have the Wild Wasteland trait. It may be a reference to a Monty Python sketch called Hell's Grannies, that depicts a bunch of pensioners walking around the streets of London, causing trouble. Well, with all of our escorts found, all that's left is to go back to the Atomic Wrangler for our reward. Well, James, I found the sex bot you were looking for. You did? Ha, damn! I've been looking for one of those for years. For my customers, I mean, I'm not into that kind of shit. Oh, you're not, I bet. We can squeeze more caps out of this guy by passing either a barter or speech check. We can say, let's talk about payment, this wasn't a cakewalk. Or we can say, thing is, Fisto is a heavy-duty piece of equipment, built to last. You're right, you're right. Something like this. It's worth a little extra because it's gonna keep on satisfying you. <coughs> Those disgusting fetishists, I mean. Something wrong with someone if they gotta fuck a machine. Fisto is already programmed to respond to your commands. It is? It will? My god, imagine the possibilities. It didn't happen to come with an owner's manual, did it? Ah, forget it. Trial and error should do it. You wanted a smooth talker? Well, guess what? I found one. And who would that be? We can then choose Santiago or Old Ben. Let's start with Ben. We can say Old Ben has the experience and the skill that you need. I've heard some stories of that old guy. I'm amazed he's still alive with how much he's been through. If the stories are true, he'll be a valuable commodity here at the Wrangler. I appreciate the find. Or we can say, Santiago is your man. That honeymouthed son of a bitch? Fine. At least left to shut up occasionally. Those pretty lips of his are gonna see more traffic than a Brahmin trail in low summer. Hey, believe it or not, James, I actually found you an escort who's a ghoul and a cowboy. Imagine that. What's his name and when's he start? Oh, him? You didn't tell me you wanted a him. Uh, <clears throat> well, her name is Beatrix, and she can start immediately. A she, huh? Well, I guess the customer who made that request can't get everything he wants. Hell, who knows? He might not even notice the difference. Looks like that gives us a full roster of new ass to sell. 
Good work. Enjoy the bonus. And with that, we complete Wang Dang Atomic Tango, and now we can try out some of the goods. If we chose Old Ben over Santiago, we find the man sitting on a stool against the bar, but he has all of the same dialogue options he had previously. We find no option to purchase his services. But the opposite is true with the other three escorts. We find Fisto walking the main gambling floor. Greetings. Fisto is programmed to please. I would like to purchase your services. That will be 10 caps, please. After paying 10 caps... Thank you. I will meet you in your room. Fisto walks off and meets us in our room. I am programmed for your pleasure. Please assume the position. Woohoo! Servos active. And yes, we know what happens from here. We find Santiago chatting up some customers at a table by the stage and... Oh, Santiago, what are you wearing? Are those booty shorts? Santiago thanks you for getting him this job. Hey, we need to talk. Your discount at Mick and Ralph's was a lie. Santiago knows not of what you speak. Now, we can either kill him, or we can pass a speech check to say, Santiago, dealing with you is getting to be more annoying than it's worth. Here, I'll pay you back extra. I'm sorry. We then again have the option to kill him, but if we did, we would lose him as an escort. So instead, we'll say goodbye, and I'd better not hear about you trying this crap again. You won't. I'll be clean as a whistle. The next time we talk with him... Good evening. Are you looking for companionship, love? How do you like the new job, Santiago? It is a dream come true. Santiago never thought he could work in such a wondrous den of vice and iniquity. I'd like to hire you for a bit. Santiago is here to please, my prairie flower. Just a few caps, and I'm yours. Prairie flower? All right, here you go. I'll meet you upstairs in a moment, darling. And he jumps up to head to our room. Oh, Santiago, put something on, jeez. He walks up the stairs, enters our room, and when we enter, we find him lying in bed. To enjoy his services, we simply walk to the bed and talk to him. What? Is that the ocean? Oh, dear God. Well, for the sake of completeness, we have one more escort to talk to, and I'm dreading it. We find Beatrix in a horrifying costume, sitting on a stool at the bar. Hey, Beatrix. Um, I'm in the market for something a little unusual. I'm available, sweetie. But you'll have to do as I say. Sounds good to me. Meet me upstairs. I'll try to leave you in one piece. With that, she jumps up and walks to our room, whereupon we find her lying in bed. And to enjoy her services, we talk to her. Okay, well done, Obsidian. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Fisto and the Atomic Wrangler. A highly entertaining series of quests, Obsidian is not one to disappoint. What are your thoughts on the only casino in Freeside? What are your thoughts on the infamous sex robot Fisto? Let me know in the comments section below. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I take Sundays off, so I'm not going to have a video for you on Monday, but never fear, we will be back in the swing of things Tuesday morning. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you bright and early Tuesday morning with a brand new video.